for more, we cross to the All England Club in Wimbledon and rampaging Roy Slaven and HG Nelson. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome back. So, Nick Kyrgios, is he evil? Or is it all just strategy? No, I think it's a bit of both, Charlie. And uh, <laughs> look, you need today, if you're a young tennis player, to think about your serve, your volley, where you are on the court and all those sort of things, never mind your Air Jordans. But we come to the big problems of the spit. You need a big spitting game these days. Mm -hmm. I can hardly go on a court these days without wading through six or seven centimetres of gullies that have been put down <laughs> by the previous player. Your dirty words have to be right up there. And finally, you're smashing your racket. I mean, the impost on mums and dads across Australia because people are, and the youngsters are smashing rackets often three or four times a night is just <laughs> too much, Charlie. It's got to stop unless the government step in and often a smash racket subsidy. Now, the golden age of Wimbledon was when John McEnroe was basically tearing the place down. Answer my question! The question, sir! Is this the kind of controversy that is, is actually the strength of Wimbledon? That's the great advantage that we've got here, is that the rules are there, but we've broken through the barrier of the rules and we can do what we bloody hell we like. Yeah. We're Australians. Yeah. We don't understand what a rule is, and if there is one there, we'll step over it straight away. <laughs> the underarm serve, Charlie. I, I mean, for so long, people have been saying, oh, you know, you can't do that, it's against the rules. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It wins points. And that's what Nick's about. Winning. <laughs> <laughs> OK, staying in England, the F1 was held in Silverstone on the weekend and featured, I've got to say, one of the yeah, biggest the pranks we've seen in years. He was actually, Martin, upside down, as you can see. The, the driver was OK, the race oh. went on. I've got to ask, is an accident like this bad for F1 or exactly what they need? It's the Nick Kyrgios come to F1. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you go hoping to see something. I mean, in Nick's case, just a big lump of, you know, a big oyster coming out of the mouth onto the court <laughs> at uh, F1. That's what we got. I love seeing a prang, Charlie. <laughs> and it's great. I don't know if you've ever been to the Formula One, but, but when, if you get a prang that happens near you, and, you, you know, a hubcap might come across you or something like that. You've got something to take home. <laughs> and a hubcap off an F1, I mean, that'd be worth, oh, on eBay... Billions! Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> OK, old F1 boss Bernie Eccleston raised some eyebrows this week with his comments, oddly enough, about Vladimir Putin. Yeah, I'd still take a bullet for him because he's a first-class person. Look, uh, Bernie's... Uh, he's fairly old now. Charlie's nearly 90. He's a very short bloke, little bloke. And uh, little blokes often like to get together. Putin's a little bloke. <laughs> and when you get... You know, little blokes get together, they form bond. You know, they bond with each other. <laughs> they're, they're both little blokes with <laughs> big ideas. <laughs> you just got to find something nice in someone. You know, uh, with, with uh, Vladimir at the moment, it's very hard, but he likes Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please thank Roy and HG?